but <laughs> it is so good. This is weighty. It is provocative. It is exciting. We are going to be prophesying over nations. There is a word for America. There's a word for Poland. There are deep things of God about to be revealed to you. So please do not miss this episode. Share it. Share it, especially with your friends from these different nations mm. and get the word of the Lord out. We're asking for your agreement in the spirit to agree with what God is doing in the nations. We are going from glory to to glory. We really hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to another big conversation with the British Isles Council of Prophets core team. And you know them by now, surely. It's Louise, Simon, Emma, Phil, and myself, Adele. And uh, we are here to talk about some really heavy, weighty stuff. So you might want to sit down, grab a cup of tea, and just prepare yourself for what's coming. But we want to talk about the story of God in the nations and to give you a global context for the times and seasons that we are in so you can understand what is going on. How do I prepare myself for these times and these seasons? How do I look at the news and understand what God is doing in the nations? And so we are gonna be pressing into some revelation and wisdom about the story of God in the nations. So. What time do we live in, Emma Stark? Okay, this is this is serious serious stuff. We are in the era or the age of war, mm -hmm. and relatively speaking, as you measure the wars and the conflicts, we have lived in a very peaceful season in, in terms of world history. But we are right in the latter chapters of Matthew's gospel. In many senses, guys, this is not that prophetic. We've just read the end of the book, you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, where Jesus talks about um, famine, rumor, wars, rumors of wars, all those kind of things that he lists, you know, many falling away from the faith, great deception, people taking offense, all of the uglies mm -hmm. of that. You need the prophets who are able to say, uh, this is that or the time is now. Yeah. And so we're saying that we are entering into an extended season of war, which we do believe is going to see World War III. Now, I think we've talked about that very privately for quite a long time, uh, both with our American prophetic friends, Canadian prophetic friends, European prophetic friends. And so we don't just start to say it's the era of war just because we decided it sounded good in a moment. Mm -hmm. But we say that after an awful lot of soul searching mm -hmm. and a lot of discussion privately as prophets. Are we actually really hearing God say this? So some of you have heard us allude to that. The conversation piece, I suppose, in that we'll get, we'll, we will get specific as we go, but the conversation piece is when you're looking at the what we call the billion soul harvest, which I think we're now really reframing as the four billion soul harvest. It was Bob Jones who had the word about the billion soul harvest. And you know that Mike Bickle and Ken Fish are talking about the behind the scenes conversations that happened after that prophetic word that the one billion soul would perpetuate or um, begin a domino effect of an additional three billion yeah. souls. Yeah. So we're looking at this four billion soul heart. That's half the world's population getting yeah. ready to be saved. How does that come? Does that come in great blessing? Does that come in great ease? Does that come? No, you only cry out for a savior in mostly majoritively in pain and conflict and hardship. So the sense of this ground of two things happening and growing at the same time, the mass salvation situation, mm. which is just a yee God, but also the pain and conflict of the world as we hit wars, mm -hmm. rumors of war, how you deal with your fear then starts to be supremely important, how you deal with your wealth, which we'll need to touch, how you deal with your resources matters, and how you manage your people as leaders in the days of harvest and in the days of third world wars. Can I come back to you immediately and ask, can we avert this? 
That is the question. To, that is, is the question. Is it a done deal? Is that, is, what it is a saying? done deal. It is a done deal. It's one of those situations where we're going to have to get very sharp in our revelatory um, senses to say, where do I say that is not allowed? Yeah. We do not allow that warmongering spirit there. But in other places, we sit with God and we say, um, you know, okay, God, we see that this is a, a fait accompli um, in your uh, battle chambers in your blueprint plans before the throne mm. and that's going to take a real significant prophetic skill what you actually have got to pray a people through and what where you can pray things out. and yeah. I think it starts with that conversation let's take Russia Ukraine you and I will have cultural instinctive sides everybody in the nations of the world will have a cultural yep. default setting do I back <laughs> Russia do I back what's going on there you've got to push to one side your cultural default setting and say, God, why is this happening? What are you doing? Is this the consequences of sin? Is this just how <coughs> the, the cycle of a fallen earth goes? Are you backing aside or are you not? Mm. And a much more robust, intelligent conversation rather than just this assumption, well, I know whose side God is on. I think increasingly mm. that will not be clear. Mm. We will have to do business in the realms to find that out. Mm. Yeah, yeah, in one sense, prophesying war doesn't take a huge amount of faith, does no, it? No, no, no. I mean, it's still my daily reading today. I was in uh, one of the chapters of scripture I was in was in Ezekiel 38, which is the whole Gog, Magog, Armageddon mm -hmm. stuff that's, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's there. So, you know, that's where we're headed to. There, there's going to be that ultimate conflict. We, we know that and we see that and yeah. we see that in scripture. Um, what does take faith is speaking about how we should be walking through it. Yes. And our attitude towards it. You know, I think that if you go back to Joshua, Joshua's meeting with the captain and the host of heaven, and he essentially says, well, whose side are you on? Mm -hmm. Are you for us or against us? And yeah. he says, well, neither. No. But as captain of the host of heaven, I've now mm -hmm. come. And there's a sense in which as uh, prophetic people, we need to be those who are saying, okay, God, what are you doing? What are mm -hmm. you saying? Mm -hmm. What? How do we be on your side? How do we be on the yeah. Lord's side? Yeah in the midst of all this. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And do you have a sense of a time frame? Yes, very much so, very much so. Um, I would be setting a, um, a probably a, a two year window. And I would say that most of the prophets who are into timings are, are setting the timings around 2025 to 2027, really? give wow. or take um, a, a sense of the beginnings of that direction. Okay. And all eyes are on Taiwan and an invasion in Taiwan. Now, I've started to hear the Lord um, talk about significant breakthroughs within the nation of Taiwan um, in terms of, uh, of a watching in the spirit like a domino of gold bullion moving from the states, who we know to be a wealthy nation, and piling up in Asia now, that's been happening for some time, wealth transfer. Uh, but you can see it. Sorry, I closed my eyes because you, I want to be in the spirit with it. You can see the movement of resources and finances over to the east and the tension that that puts in place. So you're looking at, I'm watching um, technological breakthrough in Taiwan in the spirit. I'm watching nuclear medicine breakthrough in Taiwan in the spirit. I feel like the Lord has taken me into... Um, medical laboratories where I'm watching hazmat suits being worn and God saying they are in medical breakthroughs which will change the face of the earth. It will bring such wealth that it will pull China's eye to them and we're going to have mass conflict um, uh, there. And God actually giving the Taiwanese strategy of removing some of their resources out of the nation because you watch Taiwan and the spirit being decimated and then having to rebuild their nation in the years to come. Wow, that's sobering. Yes. And so when you say uh, the beginnings of in the next couple of years, well, there's yeah. an understanding in that that the birth pangs of World War Three are beginning, yeah. Rather than this yes. is it. I, I feel more comfortable with that. The birth pangs are beginning, 2025, 2027. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think, is the dynamic of the movement of finances around the world, which um, you can feel and see in the spirit. You can see, you know, because, of course, the Lord says the silver and gold is mine. So where you're watching in the spirit, silver and gold, 
and um, different from uh, I think what God is saying about uh, digital currency but where you're watching the movement of silver and gold in the spirit you're watching where God is putting par bases in the spirit and um, it's it, the, the the dynamic of power is changing. I mean, the West is just not going to be dominant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we've been sensing that in the spirit for some time. Mm -hmm. You know, eyes east in mm -hmm. terms of the church, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and I notice that we often refer to the Western church because there's this awareness of what's happening here is not the same as what's happening there. You know, there's a lot of persecution. There's a lot of harvest already happening yes. in the east, and so. Yeah. It, the spiritual waiting is in the East, and now you're saying the power waiting. Power finances and yeah. spiritual leadership. Yes, yes all of it. Yeah. All of it. Why does it matter and why are we talking about this? Because we need to understand that it's not just me in my small corner and you in yours. It's a sense of, look, I'm going to have to steward something um, and I'm going to have to live through the days not just of recession in a nation but we're going to live in a global depression and um, we're going to live in a balance of power and that has very specific ramifications for here and now mm -hmm. and that's all about hoarding stuff in some fearful way but it is about a sense of God we're going to have to steer debt freeness in the next few years yes we're going to have to contend for uh, people who are not destitute we are going to have to be like Joseph was mm. in the stewarding of um, Revelation for um, Pharaoh in uh, in his context in Egypt, where we say, look, we do have some blessing right now. We do have provision right now, but there is a greater ease. I have got to get focused in getting debt free. I've got to get a new understanding, which is available of um, investments and investment portfolios. I've got to be following God in those kind of say, God, put that anointing on me right now. So I understand investment, um, um, gold, silver, minerals, that I understand the strategies of heaven into debt free so not just that I'm at, at, at kind of like zero but that I am a resource mm -hmm. house because is that not all our prayers God yeah. make us a resource God make us the people who lend to nations and borrow from none but in that sense I'm wanting to secure the future well-being of those in my world of those who I have responsibility for because I want to be a resource for them and the sense of God saying get focused right now because the world is shifting faster uh, than you think. This is not about God saying you can have comfort because that is never the promise of the Lord. It's a grow up, get serious, get resourced, get debt free, mm -hmm. get the community in place who are used to um, lending each other their strength, lending each other their resources because you're going to find in the West a very different future. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's so good. And I'm, I'm really pleased that you've picked up the biblical precedents of prophets and God speaking into the finances of nations. So you yes. referenced Joseph, obviously God gave the dream that revealed the financial economic solution for Joseph to steward with a long-term view of yes. the destiny of Israel. Yes. And so then you have in the New Testament, of course, the prophecies mm -hmm. about the famine and therefore yeah. they get ahead of time, start collecting money for those who are going to be affected by the famine. So this yes. is, I just want people watching to know this, there is a biblical precedent for God speaking into the destiny and the finances of, of nations. I mean, yeah. I don't know, Phil, if you want to yeah. add anything into that. Yeah, so I mean, I think that throughout scripture, what you see is that God is interested in the nations. He's interested mm -hmm. in what's going on, particularly in conjunction with his people mm -hmm. and how his people live in the nations or respond to the nations. Mm -hmm. And very often God will use nations, even unrighteous nations, uh, for for being sources of judgment upon, mm -hmm. upon disobedience mm -hmm. of the people of God. So, you know, all of Habakkuk is about that, right? You know, Babylon... Yeah is coming against Israel, but actually Babylon's going to be judged themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that it's it's using them in order to bring something to bear. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we are going to be kingdom people, kingdom minded and, and kingdom church in in these years to come, I think mm -hmm. there's an interesting parallel where the Lord yeah. shifts the church into one season and shifts the nations into a season that mm. are uh, walking out in tandem in terms of this is a new thing here and this is a new thing here. Mm. And this here actually needs to be salt and light in the midst of this here in order to bring salvation, be a vessel mm. of salvation amongst the nations. 
I, I think that one of the biggest challenges we have it many times is the the parochial mindset that mm -hmm. the church that, yeah. that we have mm -hmm. in the in in the sense that mm -hmm. what's happening over there has no bearing on what's happening mm -hmm. over here yeah. and uh, just as you were talking for the, the rebellion of Moab where the Lord tells the Israelites go and dig ditches in the valley yeah. And you think, how on earth does dig, digging yeah. ditches in the valley produce victory over there? But something that apparently had no mm. relation to what's happening mm. here, the Lord understood the bigger picture. Yeah. And I think so often what happens is our prayers can be reactionary. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I always yeah. have a little bit of a chuckle to myself when we say we're going to have an emergency prayer meeting. Ugh. And it's like... I understand it, and you know yeah. it's news to us. But God doesn't have those. No. Yes. There's not an emergency in heaven because right. God is outside of time, sees yeah. the beginning from the end, knows everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got to move to, or don't think, no, we've got to move to a different world perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys know I am heavily invested in the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Many, many dear friends in the yeah. Ukraine, and when the war started in the Ukraine. Um, I actually, for, I think for at least, well, a long time, didn't sleep. Yeah. And and just praying, praying, you were burdened, and yeah. burdened, and still yeah. am. Yeah. But it, but it's like, how do you pray this? I mean, in our last episode, we were talking about the Chinese church saying, mm. "Don't pray for persecution to stop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pray for us to endure in the midst." Yeah. And the understanding of the fact that God deals with eternity, yeah. and yeah. therefore dealing with something, an event in a temporal moment that brings about divine purpose, God's idea of redemption is not reflective of our our really first world mm. comfort driven. That redemption is it means God's going to make me more comfortable. Yeah. yeah. C -c can we push that because, I mean, uh, Louise, that sense of like you just want the prophets to say they're there, massage your ego. We, we've kind of got ourselves lost in that ca cotton candy, candy floss space, and yet here is Isaiah shouting at Hezekiah, "You're going to die," you know, and or like the fig tree, you know, oh, cursing the fig uh, the, cur the curse of the fig tree. And the whole nature of prophecy there sounding quite harsh for the purposes of redemption. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I mean, that brings us into a whole other level of the power of uh, hearing what God is saying and delivering the mm -hmm. word. Um, I'm just as, as reflecting while you're talking. I mean, we must keep the big picture um, and, and so we're not reacting emergency prayer meetings, but we're responding yes. from go. an understanding of what is God actually doing. And this is all about mm -hmm. the fullness of the glory of God mm -hmm. as yeah. the waters cover. Yeah. yeah, you know, that is what it's that's what this is all about. And when we have that mindset and we're sitting in that, mm -hmm. I actually think we can hear and think clearer so yeah. then we can come uh, we know then what to pray i love what you're saying about the persecuted church and you pray that we will endure yeah. pray that we will be strengthened yes. so we're actually praying the prayers i mean even if we we can't get hold of those get to the word get out paul's prayers yeah. how he prayed so that it's all about the strengthening of the inner man it's mm -hmm. all about the revelation yeah. of the love of god what he is doing mm -hmm. then we will easier see what the enemy is doing yeah. so we know when to speak to what to strike yes. it down yeah. Yeah. i mean uh, jesus cursing the uh, uh fig, the tree. fig tree is such a fantastic and amazing story and how mm. it's how it's done in the gospels and how then he goes into mm. and what he does after it and just the whole tra trajectory of it I mean, a funny thing on that, talk about cursing trees, take it into a little bit of a more jovial part of the conversation. <laughs> you, but, you know, I've actually had personal experience of that. Yeah. We had um, a yew tree, not a fig tree, that was planted um, right on front of the most amazing stained glass window um, in our the church building. Mm -hmm. And so the light could not come in because of this tree. And uh, I passed it one day and we were out praying and with a, a couple of the girls, I said, you know what we should do? Let's curse the tree. <laughs> Let's curse the tree. And I, I don't know whether it was just a moment or, or what, I, but it was mm -hmm. an inspired moment. I cursed the tree mm -hmm. in Jesus name and I laughed about it. I could not believe it. The following day wow. when I came down to the church, the uh, local council 
were there in the graveyard, within the graveyard, and they completely cut down the tree wow. to, as there was nothing left of it. And here's what happened. As soon as that tree cursed, it would it withered, it didn't quite wither to the roots um, as it did yeah. in the scripture, but it was gone. And then what happened? Then the light came in. Yeah. Then it could see the light. And we're going to be called to curse some stuff mm -hmm. in order for redemption so the glory of God can yeah. be seen and yeah. the light the light can come in. And I'm interested in this conversation, guys. You know, we know what we, we hope we know what God is doing, and it's always about his glory, it's always about harvest, it's unto the redemption of all things by the revelation mm -hmm. of the sons of God. Okay, we get hold of that, we can respond to that, but in the midst of that, we also need to be aware of what the enemy is doing. Yeah. So what are we to judge? Yeah. What are we to deal with? Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? Yeah, and there's there's a shift that's taking place in how we prophesy as a result. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, I remember someone saying to me, Phil, how come none of the prophets saw the pandemic? Yeah. And I don't my, think that's true. Well, started. my response was, they did. <laughs> they just didn't say it because we're so locked into the prophecies, encouragement, comfort, yeah. and exhortation. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's true, it is, but it's also other stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And because the pandemic came and as prophets, we didn't get the world ready, then it became the emergency prayer meetings, the reactionary yeah. stuff, the yeah. politicization of this virus, all this kind of stuff going on because the word of the Lord wasn't initially spoken into it. Yeah. You know, uh, because we had fallen into this kind of paradigm of softly, softly, nice comfort yeah. words, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. And the problem with that is, we actually believe um, as prophets that the the pandemic was a um, uh, a dry run, yeah. uh, a uh, precursor to yeah, yeah. Um, a, a kind of sense of you've got to readjust your theology of suffering. You've got to rethink about how I make you uncomfortable to bring something greater from you, that how I actually shut some things out and you're dying on these small um, mole hills of um, thinking that you just want the right to keep meeting in the way that you're meeting and you're not actually asking the more elevated, intelligent biblical questions um, of what are you trying to achieve there here, God? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to fight for my traditional greatness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and all of that got lost in... In, 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 Hence we had Psalm 91 elevated because it was all about comfort, comfort, comfort. Comfort, comfort, comfort. comfort. Which was understandable, yeah, but yeah. was not, as you say, the intelligent and the wider question. I mean, if you actually, if we if we rebranded re our, our prophetic appointments mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you actually branded it with what it actually is mm -hmm. and you said an appointment to war, because the moment that you receive a word of the Lord, the word of the Lord yeah. is an invitation yes. to demonic attack. Oh. Yes, it is. Jesus made it very clear. And he, mm -hmm. and he said, when the seed goes into the ground, the enemy comes to steal the seed. Yeah. Yes. And we know when Joseph received the word, the, Lord, the, the word of the Lord tested him. Yeah. And, and we, we don't have the grid, for, or, or many don't have mm. the grid for this. And therefore, you hear words like mm. this, um, God's going to give you breakthrough. And there's lots of jumping about, yes. but not the understanding of if, if God's saying he's going to give you breakthrough, that means you're going to have to break through something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. you know, it means, I mean, breakthrough means work. God's going to hit yeah. you against stuff. Yes. And when we're talking about yeah. shifts in nations and, yeah. and, and, and we come into a nation, we begin to speak forth the word of the Lord into a nation. The yeah. very release of that word invites a counter yeah. decree to pull that nation away yeah. from its divine destiny. Let's name yeah. one, Nigeria. Uh -huh. Nigeria is a core apostolic nation yeah. within Amazing. Africa and probably even wider. Yeah. And what's the enemy trying to do? He's trying to corrupt the apostolic gift and True. he's trying to turn it into something else. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand that the enemy, I mean, they take it down to a personal level, down to a city level. You want to know what the redemptive gift is, where the greatest point of destiny is. It's where there's the greatest level of resistance and mm -hmm. spiritual warfare. 
warfare. If a city, talk about Leicester, has a destiny or a call, or a call to mm -hmm. missions, it's inevitable that you're going to have everything that's the opposite. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. going to have every idol that there is. You're going to have every other religion that there is yeah. going to come and converge there. Why? Because mm -hmm. it's an apostolic place that's to send. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the enemy understands this and seeks yeah. to seeks to compromise and pervert the redemptive gift of nations. Of course, and yeah. we need to understand this. And I think really, um, I mean, if God gives a word. You need to understand that with that word, when Paul said, fight the good fight, yeah with the word yeah i mean do we have that grid that would people come as quickly to yeah. prophetic yeah yeah that's that's amazing i think just to pull back out to the bigger picture can i just drop in this thought about eschatology yes because i think part of our knee-jerk reaction well obviously i know which side i'm going to pray for obviously you know war is bad therefore i will pray against it these knee-jerk mm -hmm. reactions mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you start to understand that we have a, a very simplistic understanding, not of the yeah. detail of eschatology, which I'll leave Phil to explain to us all uh, in a future 10 part broadcast. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just the general. You've been given a lot of responsibility. Isn't it just like yes. But no, but the general idea that you have people that seem to believe it's all going to get better and better and better until Jesus comes again. It's glory to glory. It's wonderful. Mm. It's wonderful. Therefore, anything bad that comes, our knee-jerk reaction is, we'll shut it down because it's this is so, so glory. immature. But then you've got the opposite, which is, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's all going to get really, really, really bad. So anything that comes, well, let's, we just hide away. take yes. it on the chin and, yes. and hide. Uh, I personally don't think either of those is the full picture. Yeah, I think no, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's probably an intermeshing yeah. of the glory of God is increasing, the evil is increasing. Yes. How, yes. therefore, do we respond? So we've got to stop being so naive. It, it's Isaiah. I mean, in yeah. essence, yeah. Uh, well, let's quote Charles Dickens, it's the best of times, it's the worst of times. Okay, stop quoting Charles Dickens, let's quote Isaiah. <laughs> you know, the great glory on the earth, but great darkness on the people. Yeah. In other words, you, you are seeing these two things go hand in hand. And here yeah. is our error. Oh, well, I must always be rejoicing. And and yet there is such a, a thread of sorrow and lament in Scripture. And actually, I must be one who can rejoice and also be in lament and sorrow. In my sorrow, I have joy. In my joy, I have lament. And maturity is navigating both of those at the same time. That's right. And, and this, we, we are, we're, we're just, it, we're biblically illiterate. But we have a Western dynamic that I don't think th exists in the global south or in the Asian context where I think I should be in comfort the whole time. This yeah. is utter nonsense yeah. uh, that, uh, that I grow in my hardship and I joy in the suffering that's set Absolutely. before me. And I know that I'm not growing in the, always in the blessing. So I lament sometimes in the blessing because I know that it comes with a higher responsibility. You know, all of that is the complexity of these parallel train tracks of healing and not seeing healing, yes. of sorrow and lament, of suffering. And all of those are parallel train tracks through scripture. And so I think this is the time of God saying, you're going to have to grow up in some theological yes. things. So yep. let's talk persecution. Yeah. Because what you know is that you have eschatologically a victorious church. How does a victorious church form in the soil of persecution? Yeah. That's right. So you have to hold persecution and victorious church in the same place. Where is person persecution going to come? Well, can we push this in, guys? You can kind of keep me sharp on this. I think because when we look at the uh, our es uh, eschatology and end times concepts, mm -hmm. Um, you're looking at many headed beasts. In other words, that you have demonic agreement for the fullness of the end times. Demonic agreement. So you're talking about Revelation 12, yes. seven headed dragon. Yes. Uh, beast from the sea, beast yes. from the earth. Yes. The whole concept of the multi headed. Yes. The multi headed creature, the composite creature. Which, which for me is a symbol or a sign that demons, to do their worst, must agree. Yeah, so here we here we have a fundamental shift yes. in our understanding because our eschatology up until now has really been dominated by systems of interpretation. Yes. So you take systems and what they do is they they go on one side and they exclude the other. Mm -hmm. So my my own viewpoint is dispensationalism is too literal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Postmillennialism is not literal enough. Yes. Uh, uh, Premillennialism is too focused in the future. Preacher 
uh, pederism is yeah. too focused on the past, amyalism is too focused on the now. Yeah. You know, and it's actually they've all got flaws, they've all got yeah. errors. But actually, what we're seeing in Revelation, what we're seeing is this is this conflict between the powers of dark God bringing judgment upon the powers of darkness. That's what really what the Book of Revelation is about. Mm-hmm. God saying, right, time yeah. is up for Satan and his cronies. Time is up for wickedness. This is judgment time. And there's a sense in which you have these multi-headed uh, beasts in Daniel and Revelation yes. that are, uh, you know, there's parallels with uh, Revelation 12, Psalm 74, the seven-headed mm-hmm. uh, dragon, all this kind of stuff going on. And God's saying through the midst of all this, and we need to stop being so one-dimensional yes, in the way we understand it. So what's our response? Well, you know, we need to stand and stand firm. But hey, we also need to sit in heavenly places. Yeah. Oh, we also need to lay down in green pastures. So mm-hmm. do we stand? Do we lay? Do we do do we sit? What do we yes. do? Well, actually we do yes. it all at the same yes. time. Yes. Yes. So in this sense of what I think we're going to watch is um Satan has to use the principle of demonic agreement to have any hope of you know impacting anything. Um so therefore I do believe, I don't know whether you've been under the grind in the foundations of Islam in the spirit. Not recently. Not recently. (laughs) It's gloriously cracked. I mean, Islam's not holding. And so you're seeing this mass salvation out of Islam. Why are you seeing mass salvation to Jesus Christ out of Islam? Because ISIS, um, uh, or the Islamic State, fundamentally overplayed its hand and it exposed its evilness to ordinary Muslims. It cracked its own foundations by the overplay of its hand. So it's fundamentally not holding. Now that's going to take years to work out. It's not an instant thing. But Islam is not the problem of the future. The problem of the future is when there is demonic agreement. And that's where mass persecution comes from. So here is what I think we're going to see happen. I think we're going to see Hinduism in India become a training ground for how to persecute the worldwide church. Because Hinduism is polytheistic. It allows for the agreement of many demons. And uh, and you and I do think that what this is a very strong thing to say I think we will see a mass salvation of Islamic Pakistan and we will actually see a shifting of them being dominantly a Christian nation that's an amazing prophetic wow. word I think that, it's actually happening isn't it that Pakistan is going to become dominantly Christian because wow. Islam is not holding yeah. but India is going to be the be a real stumbling block because it's going to train the worldwide movement of Hindus in a form of persecution because it's their agreement between witchcraft and, um, and many gods. And the problem that we'll see from Nigeria is that um, uh, Islam in Nigeria is not just single Islam, it's marrying witchcraft. So you're not getting the pure one demon-led Islam, you're getting the, the marriage of witchcraft to other spirits with Islam. Yeah, syncretism. Uh, yeah, so, syncretism. So you're getting a form of Christian persecution in Nigeria and a form of Christian persecution in India that's going to train the worldwide demonic entities in how to persecute the Christians, which requires a different strategy of spiritual warfare because we're going to see demonic agreement that we have never seen before. So it's everything changes and where persecution comes from is not actually um, uh, uh, secularism or humanism, but it's from militant Islam and militant Hinduism married to other demons. And, and th- this this is a concept, it's a biblical concept. So if you remember the very, very first prophecy in the Bible, and we, we talked about it this, this weekend, it's very first prophecy in the Bible, it says about how the offspring of the serpent will be in, at enmity with the offspring of Eve. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay? And so the concept of demonic offspring is a really fascinating one. Or, or yeah. Because what happens is that you might, say you have, someone has a spirit of 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 lies, 
but they also have a spirit of greed. Those two things marry together and suddenly you have a spirit of stealing and thievery, mm -hmm. right? Which then is a third thing that has been given birth to by the combination of the yeah. two. Mm -hmm. And so whenever we're talking about these different heads coming together, these marriages of demons and all yeah. this kind of stuff, what gets produced might not look like what bore it. So we need to be able to have that mm -hmm. spirit of discernment where we're able to recognize, well, God, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. What are you saying in regards to this? And how do we, mm -hmm. as your people, respond to the revelation that you're giving on this mm -hmm. so that we can be effective in our warfare? Mm -hmm. it, it's very much um, the demonic, the concept of the demonic cabal, the agreement of many demons that you see in Joshua with the five yeah. Amorite kings, the agreement of the kings against uh, the people of God in Joshua. Let's talk then about Genesis. spiritual warfare. Yeah. I mean, as... Genesis. Oh, sorry, no, the Amorite kings of Joshua. Joshua, you're right, sorry. Yeah. Five kings of Abraham, isn't it? Yes. The many... But I think that there's multiple concepts yeah. of that, yeah. Sorry, Phil, you should try reading your Bible. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's embarrassing. You're quite right. <laughs> <laughs> just a little should correction just there. Just yeah. I know, yeah, yeah. you should yeah. really get more into the word. Let's talk about <laughs> spiritual warfare. You know, as you're talking about demonic agreement, yeah. the things that come to my mind from the Old Testament are those occasions when uh, God threw the demonic into confusion. We've got them getting mm -hmm. confused as the people of God praised and worshipped and entered first and then the King Jehoshaphat went, yeah, yeah. went mm -hmm. into confusion. We've got um, where Gideon, Gideon goes, goes in and, and there's panic. Yeah. God in the releases end of the camp, panic yeah, the and he does that several yeah. places mm -hmm. where there's the, the yeah. siege, there's panic yeah. in the camp. So let's talk about discernment. Louise, I'd like to come back to that as well because I think it's so key. You have to know, is this God? Is this the enemy? Is it flesh? Is it a combination? How do I respond? Because if you're always just going to assume it's it's demonic or it's God, you, you're going to have a tough a tough time navigating your own personal response and the worldwide picture. So, mm -hmm. thoughts, please, on I'm spiritual think, warfare discernment. I'm just thinking of so many of the biblical stories. It's actually quite simple. Yes, because it's just about asking the right questions and listening. It's about trust and it's about faith. It's not about being overwhelmed by the situation that we're looking mm -hmm. at. It's about being about That's trust right. and faith in mm -hmm. who God is mm -hmm. and understanding who he is yeah. and ultimately mm -hmm. the big picture and what he's doing. So whether it comes through a dream yeah. or whether there's a strategy, I mean, when you hear the sound, you know, mm -hmm. in the balsam trees, the wind or whatever, that's yeah. the time you're to go out ahead. Well, yeah. like, well, you know, I mean, how simple and how straightforward yeah. is that in terms of, of a strategy? So I think in terms of discernment, can I honestly say I think we have to be less complicated? Very good. Yeah. And, and it's not to be simplistic, but rather we've got to understand that um, the, we're on the Lord's side OK, yeah. we're so and he's wanting to fight with us and for us and he's wanting mm -hmm. us to contend with him for his glory and ultimately what he's doing in the nations. So let's ask intelligent questions. Yeah. Lord, what is the enemy? What do I need to see? Open my eyes so I can see what the enemy is doing. Let me have a mindset mm -hmm. of what you're saying and doing in a situation. Mm -hmm. So I have a context um, and not getting overwhelmed by what we uh, see on the news or what we yeah. read, although we do mm. need to be intelligent about that as well. Yeah. But then notice what our dreams are. I'm taking more notice now of my dreams. And when yeah. they come, usually they're quite straightforward mm -hmm. and there's revelation in those scenarios. Plus, we need to know the word and we have to get a deeper level mm -hmm. of relationship with one another mm -hmm. so we can come along and say, this is what I've heard from the Lord, yeah. knowing that none of us have the full revelation and it's it's in the group together and as leaders together, mm -hmm. we can actually support and help one another and then come up with, this is what the Lord is saying, this mm -hmm. is what we see the enemy doing and this is the strategy he has given us and then working it out together. I don't think that is so terribly complicated. I, I, I think there's a, there's, there's, there's a funder, if you actually, if you look at what the narrative is mm -hmm. through media, through all of the different, I think it does give us a little bit of a key mm -hmm. 
to understand what the answer is in managing this. I mean, what is the prevailing? What has been the prevailing thing that's been communicated to us for, for from pandemic? What is it? Be, be afraid. Be, be, be afraid. Be afraid. Be afraid. Very afraid. Be afraid. I mean, I mean, it's got so ridiculous that it's like it's going to rain. You're going to die. It's going to be sunny. You'll probably die. It's going to be cold. <laughs> And you'll probably die. There's going to be some wind. You'll die. And it's yeah. like everything. Here's a bit of news. Everybody's going to die. Yes. There's no question we're going to die. Unless Jesus comes back before, we're we going to die. Going to the die, issue yeah. is, is what we do while we're alive. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think Proverbs, um, Proverbs yeah. 9, 10 says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. But I don't think we've understood what that wisdom is at all. Because the mm -hmm. root meaning of that word wisdom is military strategy there it is and and you see if you are married to the spirit of fear the implication then you can't be in the fear of the lord and in the fear of everything else yeah, at the yeah, same yeah, time yeah. so if the enemy can bring a people into a place that they're married to fear yeah. by virtue mm -hmm. of being married to fear you were divorced from the very place that you mm -hmm. receive military strategy yeah, to be right. victorious that's in right. circumstances can I, I want to come to you phil but first can you just look in the camera and do some mass deliverance please for people who are watching this and feel like I might be married to fear. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Sort yeah. it out, Simon. So right now, I want you to come before the Lord and I want you to repent for where you've partnered with fear. Mm. However it's manifest itself. It doesn't matter what it is, but anything that you've got more faith in than God mm. is ungodly. Mm. And it is the worship of fear. Mm. So right now, Lord, we repent mm -hmm. of partnering with, hosting, accommodating, mm -hmm. and living with the spirit of fear in our thinking, yeah. in our expectations. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, break agreement with the spirit of Come foreboding on. in Jesus' name. Yeah. And we break agreement with the fear of aboding, with the fear of, of death. We break it now in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And right now we bring our hearts to you afresh and we realign ourselves with that verse, the fear of yeah. the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, so I declare, Lord. let there be a displacement yes, of a principality of fear that has been released through demonic agreement across the nations, Come across on. the British Isles, where there's been agreement in the spiritual atmosphere for fear to rule. All of the stuff that's happening in the earth, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying fanaticism and, 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 and protest is rooted in a spirit of fear and motivated by a spirit of fear. And we break Break it now in Jesus, Jesus name. name and we release a fresh baptism of the fear of the Lord and a fresh baptism even as we're told do, do not be anxious about anything but with prayer and petition let your request be known to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, uh -huh. yeah, will yeah. guard your hearts guard and your minds mm -hmm. and to consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds because the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Yeah, and we thank you, Lord, for wisdom, military wisdom, yeah, yeah. military strategy yeah. to know how to stand yeah, yeah, yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I mean, the, That's great. Listen, mate, you can feel good. some things yeah. shifting around yeah, in the spirit. Yeah. The military strategy is already given to us in Revelation 11, which is a prophetic church. Mm -hmm. You will not survive unless you have prophets, a prophetic church, a revelatory understanding, because you're going to have to hear the Lord for unusual instructions around financial That's breakthrough, mm -hmm. breakthrough actions. It is this place where God is saying you cannot be the church that you have been without the prophets and revelation, because it is this um, almost like a pinball machine where you're going to have to change course yep. and understand the immediate kind of leadership of the spirit of God and this sense of you must develop your word of knowledge Absolutely. gift you've got to come back to your word of knowledge gift. you're right with Jacob who develops his future um, with um, uh, Laban in how is he going to grow his future he gets words of knowledge yes. about how he's managing the, the water troughs of the sheep and the goat yeah. the sheep and the goat what he puts in the water troughs the word of knowledge to secure his future and as a, it's just understood and we make it complicated you don't fear and you're a prophetic church almost the end and, uh, yeah it's there I mean 
So many, so many times yeah. my people are destroyed. Why? Because of a lack of knowledge. Where yes. there's no spiritual revelation, the people cast off restraint. Yes, yes, and yes. it's there right in the core of yep. Scripture. Yeah, Jesus yes. said, I only do what I see the Father yes, doing. Yes, and yes. if you abide in me and my word, rhema, not yeah, Lagos, yeah. rhema yeah. word, revelatory yeah. word. Yeah. If you abide in revelatory word, mm -hmm. then you will be fruitful. Yes. It's there in scripture. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. there in the black and Can white. Can I just hop in there with a, just a very quick story of, I don't think we understand how powerful we really are in the right, right yeah. sense. We were born again to rule and to reign and to mm -hmm. bring the kingdom. Yeah. And I just remember some years ago being um, mm -hmm. back in Ireland, being in a scenario, mm. look, we weren't uh, anything wonderful as a group of people, mm -hmm. but we had apostolic authority, we had prophetic revelation, and we had a group of people who were really seeking God, and the worship was amazing. And in one evening, prophetic revelation mm -hmm. came, and words of knowledge, and we really didn't, we weren't really very confident mm -hmm. about it, but we felt like the Lord was asking us to judge our prime minister and uh, the government he led. And we did that, we prophesied it, and then we decreed it. Yeah. And we were being brave, I have to say, we were being courageous yeah. and not really knowing what we were doing. And I remember my husband standing up at the end and saying, uh, making a proclamation and saying, you will read about this in the papers this mm -hmm. week. Wow. And he just made that declaration, but we really didn't, weren't sure what we were gonna be mm -hmm. reading. Uh, two, two days later, yeah our prime minister out of the blue resigned. And the press were there outside parliament building saying, we never saw this coming. We never knew this was gonna happen. And us as a crew, because we made that judgment, because the Lord said, yeah. it's time is up. There's deception, there's all stuff happening and I am judging. Now you guys need to stand and be the means of my judgment mm -hmm. on earth. We stood up into that place, did it. And here was, here was a result. Um, so I, I just want to encourage our, yeah, we're our viewers. We're powerful. We are powerful people. Yeah. We, can, we are mm. with the armies of the yeah. Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. this is a brilliant place to be in. And yeah. as Simon is so fantastically said, there is no room for fear because the fear of the Lord is so beautiful and mm. overwhelming. Mm. That's the place our energy needs yeah. to go. Mm. Not in fear of the circumstances because we're a powerful mm. people. That's right. So, so the Holy Spirit led response yes. to there's wars, there's rumors of wars, mm -hmm. Taiwan, all this kind of stuff is yeah. never panic. Yes. Yeah. It's always faith. Yeah. Now, we, I, I need to reinforce my biblical credentials now after that. <laughs> uh, the, so Psalm 2, we talk about a lot. Yes. Psalm 2 is the second most quoted psalm in the New Testament. New Testament, yes. First most quoted psalm is? 16. No. <gasps> 110. 110. 110. Oh, wow. Psalm 110. Oh, yeah. Well done. 10 Ooh. points. Well done. Uh, the Lord said to Top my Lord, us. sit at my right hand yeah. until I make the enemy, your enemies your footstool. Mm -hmm. The Lord sends forth from Zion your scepter rule in the midst oh, of your enemies. enemies. Yeah. Say yes. that again. Come rule on. in the midst of your enemies. This is how we know that the kingdom of God is not some mm -hmm. future thing way off in a millennium that we've got mm -hmm. no responsibility for because there are no enemies there. Mm -hmm. There's enemies here. Mm -hmm. And so we are to rule in the midst of our enemies. Yeah. Now, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Yeah. Our enemies aren't people. It might feel like it sometimes, but our enemies are, are rulers, authorities, uh, cosmic rulers, spiritual forces of wickedness. That's that's what's going on. That's what we're dealing with whenever we're talking about here. So the, most of the chat today has actually been about, well, there's a demon here, there's a demon there, and that's happening yeah. here, and this is influencing this, because that's where our enemies are. Yeah. And we are to rule in the midst of it because yeah. Jesus rules in the midst of it until he's put them all under his feet. Mm -hmm. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan under, under. your feet. Yeah. Yes. So it's the, the role of the church then is to not just be salt and light, but as God's war counsel mm -hmm. on earth to have the fear of the Lord so we can have 
strategy for warfare mm-hmm. so that we can be effective in seeing the rulership of Christ through mm-hmm. his bride mm-hmm. on the earth on these days before he comes back. That's good. Yeah. And, and Phil, can you just talk us through that part in Psalm 23 where it talks about in the midst of our, you know, I'm going to feast in the midst of my enemies. And, and it's this sense of, in the midst of my enemies, I'm going to be having my KFC chicken and oh, look at them, they're all around me. Whereas I heard a very good sermon of yours where you were talking about that's not the context yeah. of what was happening. No. It was the enemies, the defeated enemies being paraded yeah. past the banqueting table that's right. where you're sitting there in victory mm. with Yeah, where the king up. sitting with his generals who have mm. actually defeated the enemy. And the, 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 the enemy had been starved of food beforehand so that whenever they're coming in, they're seeing the king and the victor sitting in abundance yep. whenever, and this mm-hmm. is the place from which the king then sentences judgment mm-hmm. yep. upon the enemy. I just think it's so important because even in our songs, they reflected this sense of such huge darkness around and here am I in my... In my fearful it's state, darkness. It's, yes, it's, it's the opposite. The root, if you look in the in the Hebrew root of table, yeah. in that yeah. verse in Psalm twenty three, you could literally say this: "You weaponize me in the presence of my enemies." Yeah. And it, and and you you then yeah, I mean you then marry that with the New Testament. What does the Apostle Paul say? We strengthen others with the strength that we've received. Mm-hmm. And and I think we if if you if you marry all of this stuff up, you can see that. The, 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 the purpose of the enemy in bringing the church to a place of selfishness and consumerism is to disconnect the body of Christ from its global responsibility mm-hmm. of seeing the glory of the Lord cover the earth yeah. as the waters cover the sea, which then pulls mm-hmm. us right back into everything that Emma's said yeah. right That's at the right. beginning of the conversation mm-hmm. about wars, rumors of wars, mm-hmm. famine, and yeah. all of these things. And we, we, we because of the fact we've been locked in Mm -hmm. consumer-driven Christianity that is really primarily, probably, some mm-hmm. might get grumpy with me, is is rooted in, the, in in reformational thinking of my personal salvation, yeah. which is not a New yeah. Testament concept. Yeah. It, it, it's corporate. Yeah. So I would like to, different... to come back to where we started just as our time's nearly gone on this mm-hmm. conversation, just again to even pull the time frame out. Now, we were talking yeah. about R.T. Kendall's book, uh, about episode, the, yeah. the Isaac promise in the last uh, broadcast and in that he talks about the great awakening which I think would would partner with the four mm-hmm. billion soul harvest yeah. in my understanding and and in if I've understood him correctly he seems to be saying uh, you know we have the charismatic movement mm-hmm. he's likening it to Ishmael then we're looking for this great awakening which yeah. will be Isaac the promise the inheritance of God's people and then mm-hmm. the second coming will come. So he's on this time frame, to my understanding, of mm-hmm. the Great Awakening, then Jesus comes again. So so are you seeing World War Three birth pangs at some point, World War Three yeah. unto the Great Awakening, unto the return of Jesus? Is that too restrictive a time frame? Is that yeah, I don't think, I, I for me, I, that, God has not spoken to me okay. about that, so I wouldn't comment on that. I do think that there's some other things he is asking us. I do think you're right. We have birth pains of war, absolutely, era of war. We have a um, a prophecy, spirit-led, revelatory-led church. Um, I think there are two other things that we must comment on. One is this. In the day when the church gets strong, in the day where the church realizes its power and it demonstrates the kingdom, Matthew 10, Mark 10. Um, uh, When you're in the sense of the rise of a powerful church, there is one great caution. It is who is your strength and power source? And I cannot tell you the number of times I am watching demons crown Christians Mm -hmm. in this place of the fact that Satan, clearly in Revelation, gives away authority to the dragon and the beast. He is used to sharing, quite limited power, we get that, but he's used to sharing it. And he is wanting to say to you, become strong with defiance. 
Right. Become strong with rebellion. Yeah. Become strong with arrogance. Become strong with whatever it happens to be. And so when I'm looking at a celebrity or somebody in a position or a politician and watch in elections, watch in elections, who has that person sourced their power from? And why are they in place? Because Satan is able to empower and delegate authority. Mm -hmm. And so I am watching demons with crimes in the spirit realm. Now, you know that Christ crimes, you know, because we've read Psalm 8. Um, um, oh, somebody needs to look it up, uh, uh, my memory. Uh, oh, uh, who is man that, he, that thou art mindful of him and the son of a man? Okay. You know, for he made him a little lower than God he himself crowned and glory. crowned him with glory and honor. Do me a while to remember yeah. um, that verse. Uh, so the crowning in Psalm 8 Oh, with glory and honor. And now, of course, we understand that we cast the crowns down. But in Revelation, the elders are in two stages. They're wearing the crowns, they're casting the crowns down. And the sense of Revelation that Christ crowns us and I cast it and he cr uh, down, he crowns me again and I cast it down, he crowns me again and I cast it down. So the sense of delegated authority from Christ or delegated authority from Satan. How did you get your status? How did you get elected? What deals did you do with the enemy? And just because we might like that political candidate, or just because we might like that church leader, beware the source of the authority. You've got to be more into We don't even talk about that. We just think if a Christian gets strong and powerful, it must be because God enabled them. Yeah. Nonsense. I mean, it really, it really highlights something that's very poignant right now yeah. in a word that's being put out. And and um, and that's the fact that, that God doesn't lead us through closed and open doors. Push meaning, that. Meaning, yeah. um, when you look at the natural, when a door opens in front of you, it isn't necessarily that God wants you to walk through it. Yeah. It's an invitation from God for you to be led by the spirit, yeah, not yeah. by the flesh. Yeah. And and I think we just we need to live from mm -hmm. a spirit realm. Definitely there are spiritual doors. We know that because mm -hmm. the apostle Paul said, the Lord opened me a door. Mm -hmm. But I want to say yeah. that an open door can be a closed door in the natural and mm -hmm. a closed door can be open. In the in, in the in the natural, and and it can be this situation mm -hmm. where I mean, I I think back mm -hmm. to the number of times that we've come to a point where there's been major yeah. advancement in front of us, and then a door has opened, and it mm -hmm. has been very attractive, yes. and it's been an yes. invitation. Yes. One yes. situation, yes. our, our type of one, there was one invitation where if you move here, you'll be on an X no amount of money yep. salary, mm -hmm. and it was attractive. And it, it was it was it was real, and I think yeah. it's worth paying attention to the fact that the temptation in the wilderness to Jesus, Luke four, when he says, "Turn this stone into bread," that was not something yeah. Jesus couldn't do. Yeah. Otherwise, it wasn't a legitimate temptation. Yeah. He said, "Since you're the Son of God, use your sonship." independently mm -hmm. of your relationship with the Father for the mm -hmm. benefit of your own progression. And that really is what we're yeah. talking about, isn't it? Self-advancement yes. independently of authentic relationship with God. And yeah. it is disturbing to me yeah. that you can be in a situation, see people healed, go back to your hotel room and the Lord say, and tell you to do that. Oh, it, that yeah, bothers yeah, me. Yeah. I do think there's a whole conversation that has to be had around looking at, in the church and saying, you look strong and you look powerful, but I have a, 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 a disquiet in my spirit because you've sourced that in the wrong place. You're crowned by Satan. And I, 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 which is we're we're in math we're Could in math. That a little bit more Sorry, directly, sorry. Uh, I do have something good here to say, but I <laughs> but I do think that uh, there is this sense of come on, church. It has to be a purified power yeah. to stand. Can we can we talk just very slightly just to add a little bit to this? There's the the um, the serpent dragon in Revelation. Yeah, well, many headed. Yeah. Yeah. So. He's described as wearing many crowns. Yes. The, the crown, the word that's used for crown is the word diademos. Yeah. Now, the word that's used for the believer's crown is the word stephanos. Mm -hmm. Stephanos means a conqueror's crown. Yes. Whereas a diademos means an entitled crown. Yeah. So, like Charles, for instance, is wearing a diademos. He didn't do anything to earn kingship. Yeah. 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 But it's just by, by virtue of, of family lineage, right? Yeah. So, 
What the enemy then crowns people with is entitlement. Yes. That's massive. Yes, 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 yes. But don't you see that I deserve a platform all the time in, you know, I deserve, I deserve, you know, all of that. Can we have a good news moment? Yes. Yeah, we've got two minutes to put one in. <laughs> because Make it quick. I Look, I love maps. I love cartography. I love the exploration of boundaries of nations and all of that. I spent an awful lot of time. Like the Hobbit. Like the Hobbit. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, thought, oh, well, that's, they, like, they like maps. They like maps. I like, I like maps. Um, I've always loved maps. I've always loved geography. I've always loved nation boundaries. I've always loved the thought of, you know, um, what spirit rules that nation, what angel has oversight over that nation. And uh, and so I, I spent an awful lot of time asking God about national boundaries and borders and and where are the spiritual warfare lines drawn and, you know, the, the troop amassment in the in the where are the demons yeah. amassing where are the angels amassing um and natural warfare i'm personally fascinated by that and here we are looking at now a real issue of migration immigration refugee asylum seeker yeah. all of that place and um you are going to see that issue of, of the people movement you, you know you got the quintessential conversations between the Mexican and the American border. You've got the conversations, the small boats in the channel between France and Britain. You've got the, the major graveyard now, 27,000 dead bodies in the Mediterranean Sea because of all the, 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 the people trying to come from Africa into Europe. So in other words, because we've not managed that, you now see the, um, the ocean start to turn hostile because the blood yes. uh, cries out in the Mediterranean Sea. So you now get killer whale um, and shark attacks. I said this was good news. No, sorry, it's good news. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You're now, see, you're now seeing, you know, the, the fish in the ocean respond to the, the, our inability to look after the nations and, the, and then the fish attacking the boats in the Mediterranean because it's a mass graveyard for, for the poor, the least, the littlest and the dispossessed. Anyway, that's the background. I am seeing God say, particularly to the USA, I will give you an unexpected hand of mercy Ooh. if you will humble yourselves and rather than being called the international police or the policemen of the world, and this is to your future president, the Lord is saying, after this next American election, he's saying, if you will drop your war threats and if you will drop your warmongering and if you will drop your mantle of aggression and truculence and self-defense, I will give to you America in a moment of mercy the ability to be the world's peacemakers, not the world's warmongers. And in it, I will give you the skilled diplomats and the negotiators who will emerge. No longer will you be the global military superpower that brings violence, but you will be the strategists for ending poverty, injustice and insecurity in nations. And the Lord is asking America particularly and some other people in other nations, rather than to be in debate about, about boundaries or it to be in debate about um, the borders of nations, to be able to be the strategists who go into nations rescue nations by dealing with injustice and poverty and insecurity so that the people want to love and stay in their own nations because you have given value back to their nation not for, fought about the boundary of their nation and I really feel like the Lord is releasing major particularly to America but there are some people around he's releasing major skill to deal with the healing of nations internally where you go as a diplomat and where you go as a strategist for displaced people and you become a peacemaker and a resource creator inside the nation so that people have the ability to stay in the nation rather than be dispossessed from the nation is a completely different kingdom strategy to let's fight about borders. And the Lord is saying, if you want to deal with World War III, you deal with it not at the borders. You deal with it by contending for a diplomatic, strategic poverty mindset that heals the nations from the wow. inside out. And right now, those mantles and anointings 
are there. But the Lord says it will only come to the humble and it will only come to those who love the nations of the world as much as I do. It will only be given to those who love the kingdom more than they love their own nation. It will not come to those in hatred. It will not come to those in partisanship. Can you keep no record of wrongs? Can you turn the other cheek? And can you see the redemptive capability of a nation and go and help that nation restore from the inside out? And then, and only then, will you be the people of the kingdom who temper the effect of the Third World War. Wow. Wow. There's a word. And there's a there's a word to Europe, mm -hmm. to Poland. Yeah. And uh, even as I was there earlier this year, the Lord said this to me while I was in Poland. I think they said to me that there's something like five million Ukrainians in Poland now. Oh, really? That have wow. moved into Poland. And as I stood on the land, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, "Blessed are the merciful, for they shall see God." Mm -hmm. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying. Watch Poland. Yeah. Watch what happens in Poland. Watch what happens to Poland's economy. Watch yeah. what happens to the move of God in Poland. Yeah. Watch what happens to the apostolic mandate in Poland. Because mm -hmm. even as that spirit of mercy has come from the nation to mm -hmm. receive those that have fled war, it has put a, a, a divine, it, it's almost, you know, the, the mm -hmm. laser pens that they use to paint targets to cause yeah. bombs to land. It has put a laser pen on Poland yeah. for God's favour yeah. and God's yeah. grace. Yeah. And I see a church planting movement and a youth movement coming out of Poland and signs and wonders being mm. birthed in Poland and fresh prophetic grace yeah. in Poland upon the church of Poland yeah. that is going to move Poland into a place of it being... A, a convergence point, which is interesting in the fact that Poland, of course, was where Hitler invaded in the Second World War. Yeah. And yet I see in this season that it's going to be the absolute opposite. It's wow. going to be a place where the Spirit of God is yeah. going to invade Europe. There is going to be an outbreak oh, of a yeah. mission movement out of Poland. Wow. wow. Okay. Hallelujah. Amazing. Amazing. Lou, Wonderful. I don't know if we've really hit, run out of time, but do you want to jump in here and prophesy over the British Isles? Oh, British Isles. Yeah. Well, in the mm. spirit, what I see with the British Isles is the British Isles is literally submerged mm -hmm. under the water as God humbles yeah. the different parts of the British Isles and almost re-engineers mm -hmm. the relationships and the relationships between the nations mm -hmm. of the British Isles. So Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, England. Um, as he is doing that, he is is it's it's like a heart mm -hmm. with with the different chambers, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. with their different piece to play. And the Lord is 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 working so hard on this this heart pulling it into alignment together. And the big issue for the British Isles, and, and I feel the Lord so strongly, encouraging, uh, contending, like heaven contending, mm -hmm. and asking us on earth to contend with him for the formulation of the British Isles in a new way in the spirit. Because mm -hmm. what he actually wants to do is, is it's like a, a, an example in the earth as when the British Isles rises again as one in the spirit together, the strength of the English and the servant, the new level of servant heartedness mm -hmm. of the English is going to bring out such an incredible level of rule and reign mm -hmm. ability from a humble base. We're going to have Scotland yeah. with its passion and, and the prophetic drive of Scotland pulling the whole of the, the sound of Wales coming forth. Yeah. And we call that particularly, it's the big one that's yeah. missing right now, but the sound of Wales coming forth and the softness and the healing of, of Ireland yeah. and, and even the strength and the courage yeah. of Northern Ireland coming together. And you have this incredible level of rulership mm -hmm. and the prophetic yeah. and the exhorting nature of Wales yes. and the teaching ability of Ireland all of these coming together as a mighty force, but it's only a mighty force yeah. in the spirit. And as we, as the British Isles, come forth, yeah. we're called into this incredible servant yeah. leadership. It's a beautiful thing. It's not a. It's not a, like ruling the nations. It's yeah. it's the opposite. It's serving the nations. And you talk about a a, um, a a missionary push from Poland. 
the missionary push mm -hmm. from the British Isles yes. together yeah. is going to be extraordinary. And when I look in the spirit, I don't see it going in one direction. I see it going in every direction as mm. the, the, those nations of the British Isles come together. And that's what is on the Lord's heart right now. I think wow. we need to press the word of the Lord a bit longer. Okay. There, there's more. There's more prophetic words. Yeah, I mean, I have a, I have a whole word for England, but do you want to go because you're burning on something, aren't you? Yeah, I, I just hear mm -hmm. the spirit of the Lord saying to, to, to the British Isles, mm -hmm. look to the coastland. Yeah. Which you'll be pleased about, Adele. Well, yeah. I hear the spirit of the next. Lord saying, look to the coastland. <laughs> for I, even as the ocean pushes onto the beach, so my presence is purged, is, yeah. is, is perched, waiting to push mm -hmm. over the coastal regions of the British Isles. Yeah. And I just kept hearing, even as Louise was speaking, yeah. saying, look to the Isles, look to the Isles, yeah. look to the Isles. And the, and the islands off the mm -hmm. coast are going to see a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit and a move of God. And we know that historically that was one of the last places we had a full-blown mm -hmm. move of God that we would describe. And I just hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, look for my presence breaking out in unlikely places. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is a time where that which has been hidden is yeah. going to come into the public eye. It's where, it's where it's been put, it's been bubbling under the surface yeah. and it's now going to begin to break out. And the yeah. Spirit of the Lord says, I am going to break the identity crisis off of England come on, come on, and come bring on. you back into your redemptive yeah. identity. You cannot abdicate your authority because of your shame of your past behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there has been a spirit of shame that has sat yes. upon you to yes. cause you to deny your God-given destiny on. and calling. And because yeah. of that, you've embraced a false pride, a false humility and a refusal to take up your role. And the Spirit of the Lord says to the British Isles, for the British Isles to fulfill her prophetic destiny, I need every part to stand up. So I say to you, England, stand up. Yes. And we come against the false decree. We come against the false prophecy. We come against the false prophets that have even spoken into the vacuum because you have rejected the prophet and embraced the false one. And the spirit of the Lord says, I will bring about a shift yeah. where the true voice of the Lord is beginning to be emerged within the nation. And I will break an alignment with the spirit of divination for the spirit of the Lord says, because you've forsaken the true prophetic office, you have become married to the spirit of witchcraft and divination. And I will bring about a great reversal, says the Lord. And the Lord says to you, England, you have been a nation under judgment and in exile before me. But the Lord says you are entering your days of leaving an extended season Amen. of exile. Mm. And the Lord says the siege that I set against you, I am ending, says the Lord. And the five new identities of England will come forth. You will be humble, you will be holy, you will be missional, you will be zealous, you will be apostolic yes. again, says the Lord. And the Lord says, Amen. I have dismantled in great pain your false identity. But the Lord says, now I give you these five new identities to step into you wow. and you once again become a missionally apostolic sending nation that is devoted at your core to me, yeah. says the Lord. The Lord says, Scotland, you must not leave your sibling relationship with England for you are provokers to each other. Ireland, says the Lord, you will unite together and be strong in your healing warfare, in your warfare healing, says the Lord, as I fuse north and south together and as I keep Scotland and England as an, uh, an entity for my glory, says the Lord, in this time. And the Lord says over Wales, you have labored under a slumbering spirit for 50 years. Now in your season of Jubilee, O oh Wales, you will no longer sleep and be slovenly and slapdash. For I will resurrect to you an energy that the entire nation lost, says the Lord. And watch as the British Isles comes out of her days of exile 
and into her days the other side of paying the price for the consequences of her international sin. And I hear the spirit of the Lord speaking to France mm -hmm. and the spirit of the Lord saying the enemy is sought to birth within you. I hear him saying that the, mm -hmm. that the spirit of militant Islam yep. has sought to create a womb that would birth a nationalistic mm -hmm. fascist spirit in reaction. Yep. And I saw a, a, what best described as a crocodile under the surface of Paris mm -hmm. and the ground yep. cracking open and its back coming up and then it disappears and it's back coming up again and the spirit of the Lord says church of France go to war against the spirit of nationalism and fascism take your stand against the spirit and shut it yeah, down yeah. for I saw I saw terrorism I saw extremism upon the streets sure. I saw buildings set on yeah. fire as this hatred and this anger sought to assert itself in reaction to this demonic spirit of extremist Islam and we declare, Father God, let that which is redemptive within the nation of France come forth. We call it forth. And where the enemy would seek to knock you off track and bring you into a track that is not consistent with your redemptive call, we call you back to your redemptive call. We call you back to your call to the nations in Jesus' name. I'm just seeing the nation of Denmark being highlighted and there's a, a glory coming on the intellectuals in Copenhagen in Denmark and it's been a country that has birthed philosophers and intellectuals but there's a glory coming to the combined mind of Christ mm -hmm. in the church in Copenhagen especially but in Denmark and there is a fusing and infusing mm -hmm. of the glory of God and the weight of glory is almost going to cause the heads of the intellectuals to be bowed down with the yeah. weight of glorious revelation that mm -hmm. is going to supersede the spirit and the worship, the idolization of the intellect yeah. and the will that has combined huh. to shut out the spirit and the emotions. And God is saying, I am breaking open a way for you, Denmark. I am breaking open a way for you in the spirit wow. that you would be a whole person again, that there will be the emotional release and healing through the people of God mm. and into the even the cultural uh, idea of who the Danish people are. Mm. There it's a transformation coming mm. to Copenhagen first and to Denmark. And it's mm. like when Saul went and was impacted by the company of prophets and in their worship and in the atmosphere of the prophets, he was transformed into mm. a new man. He was anointed. Mm. And there is something in the company of prophets in Denmark. I call forth that yeah, company yeah. of prophets specifically in Denmark to know that you carry the transformational power of God that is going to impact. I see universities, I see the governmental mm -hmm. uh, places, the powers, the corridors of power that are going to witness this shift in the intellect that is going to be weighed down and bowed to King Jesus. And I also see Cyprus being highlighted. There's just mm. a glory of God. God over yeah. Cyprus and I don't really know what's happening in the mm -hmm. financial realm but I just hear prosperity mm -hmm. prosperity mm -hmm. speak prosperity to Cyprus and I see the olive groves the oil mm -hmm. of the spirit coming to Cyprus so I speak to the land of Cyprus to rejoice you are not barren you are not forgotten church yeah. of Cyprus but there is an oil in the church in Cyprus that needs to go out to the nations. And the Lord yeah. is saying, I am gathering the mm. apostles and the prophets to yeah. Cyprus to press the olives so that this precious, mm. precious oil with the flavor of mm. the Cypriot church will then go out mm. again. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and I just see the, this movement of the apostolic coming down from the north in the, the Scandinavian countries, merging with Britain together. And I just see that the Lord saying over England, no longer will you dance around the Asherah pole, but you will dance upon injustice. No longer Come will on. you dance uh, around the fire, but mm. you will pluck the infants out of the fire. That there is this 
this thing that's coming down that is that is bringing forth a, a church movement that is a justice movement it's a righteousness movement it's a movement that that brings hope it's a movement that releases releases joy but it confronts the issues that need confronted i see central africa i see that there are going to be uh, even military coups more than there has been before but in the midst of those we're going to see the church rise up to a whole new level and a whole different level uh, this is all south uh, um, Lake Victoria mm -hmm. south of Lake Victoria I, I see I see that 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 happening and that there is a a uh, there is a renewal that's coming forth mm -hmm. to the church in that region yeah. which is going to then release the apostolic mm -hmm. in a whole fresh way um I see that the uh, within the stands within the Kazakhstan's the Kyrgyzstan's the the Azerbaijan's and Tajikistan's mm -hmm. I see there being a rising up of pastors on, I yes. see that there's there is a pastoral yes. anointing yeah that is coming upon those lands, that even as people are displaced, that the, the, the anointing that's coming forth is a is a gathering, is a, uh, a putting arms around in order to bring comfort, and in order to bring peace, and in order to bring healing, because the Lord has never asked us to, to, to live in that place mm -hmm. where we don't experience healing. We need to constantly be being, being healed by the Lord in the midst of our traumas, in the midst of our displacements. And as there's this people movement uh, around that region, around that area, uh, the Lord is going to shift boundaries and shift borders mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. I just heard the Lord say um, over Afghanistan, he said... Um, I am now today dispatching a host of destroyer angels oh. to destroy the poppy harvest. Wow. For I am defunding the Taliban, says the Lord. Wow. Oh. And the failure of the opium trade is going to happen this year. And the Lord says, I will not have the Taliban funded. And he says this, wow. I will interfere wow. with worldwide addiction come on so that my people can be of sober mind wow. yeah. literally destroy your angels like the ones who destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah suddenly in poppy fields oh, in wow. flamethrowers mm. yes I see it in the spirit with flamethrowers oh my goodness wow, wow. we agree with that no, I, I saw it I was hung in the spirit over the Nordic nations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I saw the Lord Twisting them together like it was a like like it was a blanket or a sheet mm -hmm. like a, a sheet of silk is probably the best way to describe it and I saw it being twisted together mm -hmm. and as it twisted together it began to pull back and the land began to reveal um, precious metals and and gold silver and resource within the land mm -hmm. of the Nordic nations yeah, 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 and the yeah. Lord saying there is a commanded blessing that is going to come upon the land of mm -hmm. the Nordic nations yeah. as you unite yeah, yeah, as yeah. your hearts unite and he says there is something of a prototype of a oneness of heart mm -hmm. that is going to come mm -hmm. out of the Nordic nations in this yeah. next season that is going to bring blessing into the physical land yeah. and is going to provoke other nations to jealousy. Yes. And the Lord says, take your stand on your borders, for there will be those who will seek to steal that which I begin to reveal. And the Lord says, make wise alignments and wise business decisions for there are those that would seek to make the same kind of alignments and, and agreements as happened in the continent of Africa where the land was raped for its resources yeah. and the Lord said I so is saying I'm revealing these resources not for them to be raped but I'm revealing them to you as a reward for didn't I say where there's unity I command the blessing even life evermore and the Lord says watch the news Mm -hmm. watch the news and watch and see as these things begin to become Come exposed. On. And the sign of this, I believe the Lord is saying, is that you will see significant portions of minerals that you had never thought yeah. were there, yes. particularly rare earth elements, mm -hmm. that is going to be a resource to the nations, but you must guard it so that it doesn't get stolen by the nations. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Wow. Good job. You can see the restoration of fish stock Yep. all around that the, the Nordic North Scandinavian yeah. block. You can see it in this spirit. It's a sign of people harvest, but so it's good. a sign of um, restoration of, of um, their fruitfulness 
as leading nations. Wow, come on. Yeah, wow. Any more? <laughs> Bless. <laughs> We just really want to just like rejoice yes. over what God is doing Amazing. in the peoples and the peoples of the earth and his heart mm -hmm. and the harvest that's coming. It's glorious. Amen. 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 We are going to end there. There is so much for you there to be agreeing with, yes. praying and yeah. contending mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. Take these words, yeah. weigh <laughs> them, agree with them, pray them, mm -hmm. uh, just as you ponder all that mm -hmm. we've talked about with war, with the coming glory, mm -hmm. eschatology, all of that. We bless you with yeah. the fear of the Lord, with yeah. an increased courage and faith, with an excitement in your spirit. Yeah. And uh, we will be back with another broadcast following this one. Can you even imagine how we're going to top it? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some singing and dancing from Simon. So God bless you. Thank you for spending this time with us. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Yeah.